7.50. So this is a, a detailed PPT. So instead of showing in a PPT, now I would like to see, I would like to show you directly. Just first, I give the URL. Just click on that URL. It will directly take you to the HP site wherein you click on trials and demos. I'm telling you this software they'll give only for the trial version 14 days. And after 14 days, the, this uh, tool will, ex will be expired. So click on this software e-media evaluation. The moment you click it, it will ask you some mandatory details. Give all the information. So if you see here, you can see three uh, three points. Like first, you have to give information about yourself, and then agree to the terms of service. Agree, and then directly download it. When you are downloading, you can see two options. One, the tool. Other one is a detailed PDF how to use the tool. If you see that information, it is a complete information how to use the tool and a basic uh, like. What are the two? What are what are the softwares like this? When it is installed itself, it will give you one by default application. We do performance testing for other websites, but when installing this application, I can show you with is an example. Once after the installation, the file will be of 1.75 GB. So it's of huge size. The moment you click install in the system, it will show you three parts. Virtual user generator, controller, and analysis. So once you click, double click in on your system, go for full mode setup, and then install it. This is how all the three parts will be installed on your desktop. So for now, when we install Load Runner, we came to know three parts will be installed. First one is virtual user generator, second one is controller, and third one is analysis. These are three parts of Load Runner. Fine. Next, coming to this. So the installation, I would expect everybody to install Load Runner in their machines tomorrow. So when I'm giving the sessions or code, any fusion scripting, we can do it on live or parallelly when I'm giving the example, so that you can ask me the questions. Then I'll there itself. Fine. So now today I want to explain you the detailed architecture of Load Runner and also the components involved in that. So first of all, before jumping into that, I would like to um, uh, explain what are the different types of performance testing we have. Performance testing, as I told you yesterday, we have load testing, stress testing, volume testing, component testing, scalability testing. We have many types of testings. Okay. So instead of that, you should know what type of testing we are going to do based on the client objectives. So based on the client objectives, I said we'll have different criteria. Suppose different criteria in the sense series. Does the client says so? Why we are doing is like how the how does the application respond quickly, or will the application handle expected load? Will the application handle maximum number of transactions? That is business, or how the application is behaving under 100 people or 200 people? These are the questions we get when the client gives the objectives to us. Based on this, we decide what type of testing we do. That is what here it is mentioned. Component testing, what we use is like, suppose I said we have different, different complete architecture for an application. If they, we have complete architecture, suppose you think that we have an Oracle application. Oracle application, it has different, different functionality of modules and we cannot do a performance testing for all the modules at an instance. What we do? We do by a component wise. Suppose if one component, think OBIE module is there and think other component which is e-business e -business suite. So what do we do? We'll just concentrate on one particular module and then see how is it behaving. That is called component testing. We go by component to component, analyzing its performance, we do component testing. Coming to the load testing. What is load testing is, we will see how the application is working for exactly some stable load. 
Suppose if the application is designed for 100 people, we will see whether the application is working fine for 100 people without compromising its performance, functionality, reliability, stability and all these factors we see at the time of load testing and we do load testing all these types of executions in our controller. I showed you in the controller based on the testing type we decide uh, a model called workload model and we give the inputs here. Okay, next coming to the stress testing. Stress in the name itself, it says we are stressing the software. Stressing the software in the sense, suppose, example, the application you think that you have designed for 100 people and we want to know if we stress that. Suppose if we are giving 150 people to that application, running on that application, at some point of time, how is it behaving? Is it breaking? What is its breaking point? 150, 152, 153 and so on. We want to find the breaking point of an application in stress testing. Usually we do this type of testing to give the maximum limit of an application. Load testing will just see at that particular point. Stress testing will go beyond the limit and then see where is it breaking. Go to volume testing. Volume testing, what happens is we give larger volume of data. In terms of, we give larger volume of data in terms of like uh, more number of virtual users, more number of data transactions, anything, more number of volume we give them over extended periods of time. So we give more number of volume in terms of virtual users or in terms of data accessing or in terms of database size. In any case, we can give more volume and then we decide we do this type of testing. So mainly we do, in normal projects in all, we do load testing, stress testing and soap testing. There is another type of testing called soap testing or endurance testing. What we actually do in this is, you might have seen when the application is developed, people will be initializing some variables, they use some, they use some memory variables and all this stuff at the time of designing a code. That is an usual process. Once that application, what the developer actually does is, We'll just go and execute the code. Uh, he'll just go execute the code and he'll see whether the expected output we are getting or not. That is fine. That is called unit testing. And then what he does? He'll just again do the functional testing. It is working or not. But all these testings we do only for one people. We'll not do this all the testings for multiple people. What we are doing here. So what happens at the time of performance testing as different multiple people are handling at the same time, the code, the memory variables and all these stuffs will get keep on increasing. After, after running it for three to four hours, the memory will start occupying at some point, the memory, there is no memory available for further execution. So at that point of time, you want to know what are the, how, what are the difficulties and what are the bottlenecks we have. That, that type of testing we do in endurance or soap testing. Okay, so these are some uh, types of testings. Don't worry about that. So based on the client objectives, we usually go for types of testing. Now coming to the objectives. What are our objectives doing performance testing? First, we'll find out response time. We know what is response time, right? How much it is taking time to respond to my request. Suppose if I open, go here. So this is my request. I'm going, my request is www.google.in. The moment I give request, I see how much time it is taking me to respond within fraction of seconds. So that's why I opt for Google. So this is called response time. The moment I give the request, how fast it is responding to me? That is reliability. Suppose even though in the peak load, now, now it is in the early morning, very less few people might use the application, that is Google. But if you go and open the Google page at any point of time, whether in the morning or in the night, at any point of time, what it does? It, res it responds at the same, same time. We will see its reliability. Configuration sizing. This comes with the architecture. 
what is it in the architecture was we have web server application server and the db server and we have different configuration this is hard disk of size so and so ram so so and so so there will be different with some type of configuration and once this configuration is fixed we will analyze the performance so we want to know which type of configuration is giving the best results so based on that we have to decide capacity planning is nothing but i said right we will do the stress testing to find the break point so till then we can use the application and after that the degradation starts so we want to know the capacity planning also and acceptance acceptance until it is performing well in the performance testing we will not let the application go live we will not let it go live until it is acceptable we will be keep on doing in performance testing cycle one we will tell them the results and again they'll do the developers will tune the code and again they give us back again performance testing cycle two we do again we'll see its performance again if it is not up to the mark again we'll send the report to the client showing that these are the areas which has to be improved again the client will again the business the developers will again tune the code and performance engineer will tune the code in the database and again they'll get back to us so it keep on going until it is acceptable Bottleneck identification. Bottleneck identification can be in any server, web server, application server, DB server, any server, and at any point of time. During load testing, you might get. During uh, soap testing, you might get. During stress testing as well, you might get. So all these are our main aim is to find the bottleneck identification. If there are, if there are any issues in the application, we should find out and let them know. Regression. You might have known already. Regression is nothing but suppose if any new uh, any new change has been done to the application, it should not affect the existing one. So adversely affecting the now in terms of response time and all this stuff, we'll see. So product product evaluation. So what is the best best server for these many users? What is the configuration? All this. These are just an objectives what we keep in our mind before doing the testing. So I said why the manual testing is problematic yesterday itself. I covered. If you have any queries, you can ask me. So now, components. So one step after installation, I said there will are the three components which got installed. That is, the user host is nothing but virtual user generator. This one, virtual user. This is eleven point five one version which. Now recently changed all the symbols. Now the development, everything. But previously, if you see the icons of virtual user generator, it is little different. But only these are the latest symbols which has released in last year. So this is first one, virtual user generator. What I am speaking, and this is controller, and this is analysis. So here, what he is telling is how the data is flows. Virtual user generator. If you see the is is here, it is showing the number of people. Virtual user generator. What it actually does is, we write a code in virtual user generator. What is the code we write? I said at the time of test plan preparation, we will decide a, a bunch of business process or the functionalities on which we are concentrating. That part we do at the time of test plan preparation itself. So those business process. We have to prepare a code. That code is prepared in virtual user generator, and then this code is deployed into the controller. Controller, what its main aim is? We have a separate license for controller. Once we buy controller here, the virtual user generator and the analysis part is absolutely free. It is very much costly, so we are giving these two parts as free. So virtual user code, uh, you generator. Basically, what we do is we'll prepare a code for all the business process in this part, and this code is deployed into the controller now. Once the code is deployed, instead of running for one user, we'll see based on our performance testing type, and then we'll decide the number, hundred, one fifty. There is some model preparation. There is one type of uh, uh, model Excel. Calculation involved to give this number and all these details and explain you in detail in later phases. 
once that code is deployed as well as with the number of how many number of people has to run and all this some uh, all this information in the controller it is it will execute it for 3 hours 12 hours based on our testing time and then it will go for an automatically invoke analysis report so load runner is a solution which will actually gives this is how it works it has three parts each part has definite purpose first thing just for the code second thing running the code the third one analyzing the code you must have understood like the manually we are not able to do what it is actually the tool is doing it is instead of creating we have seen in manual testing 100 people sitting in 100 resources and all the all this information this very it is wastes of hardware what they actually found a solution in this tool is they can create as many number of as virtual users in the controller and they can make people work at that point of time so replacing testers with virtual users these kind of persons who are wo working virtually is called virtual users and suppose we are i said the execution will be done on controllers right suppose if the configuration size is not sufficient in one system at least to run virt one virtual user it will take 2 mb of memory suppose if the is if it is not sufficient we can give extra missions like extra slaves controller is a master you can give extra slaves to this master and make it run so finally analysis tools will come so you might have understood virtual user host what it actually doing we are writing the code how why are we writing the code we are actually hitting from virtual user generator to web server db server app server and then we are preparing a code so once this code is deployed in the sense this code actually these num these many number of people are automatically hitting the back end and then an execution is going on once the execution is completed we are going to analyze it fine any doubts this is how uh, the, these are the components of load runner and the architecture i'll tell you the how the data is flowing fine so can i go ahead okay so this is covered uh, yesterday itself but some extra tools we have qa load rational performance tester web load neo load all these are different tools we have the tools we have other than this load runner but the, every time the top tool the top tool is load runner okay so i said why is load runner Okay, it depends. Usually we use we use C, C programming language. But C, it's it's almost it's very easy. It's not that difficult. But if your application is different, like sometimes if it is you if you are using web protocol, I am telling you what are the protocols here. Protocols are nothing but the rules and standards we need to in order to communicate with a particular server. If the if the protocol Java protocol, if you are using, you need to write the code in Java. If you are using See web protocol. You have yeah, all the code will be generated in normal C language. So it depends. But usually you should know C to write the code. Basic C language will suffice. Okay. Next supporting environments. I said Load Runner has fifty six protocols. So I'll tell you. I'll show you in the directly. I open here. See the moment you go. This is a new field. They have just included as if the developers have developers have IDE sharp environment. So I said there are different kinds of protocols. So these are the protocols available. You can search for it. If you see. .NET, AJAX, Click and Script, C User, Citrix, DNS, whatnot. It has everything, every protocol. It can capture communication between anything, middleware, database. Only you can, if you want to analyze the performance of only database, you can go for it. And a database, Java, V User, IMAP, Flex Protocol, LDAP, many pro Oracle, ODBC, different protocols, Oracle, MCA, Oracle Web Applications, 11i. All these are different protocols. RTE. RTE is for mainframes. Oracle MCA is for Oracle applications. 
Oracle Web Applications 11a, it's a combination of web plus Oracle. So, uh, SAP protocols, we have all these are many protocols which are supported by Load Runner. That is why everybody is in, uh, crazy about, everybody are crazy about Load Runner. So, it depends. Suppose, if you go for Web Protocol, Web Protocol, you normally use C language. At the moment we can actually many people might think that just we have to go record and replay the script will work of course sometimes it works but recording is option is available in the load runner we will record the script but we should understand the communication and we have to make sure make sure that communication is properly going using some concepts what I'll explain you all these concepts we have to incorporate in the code and make the code work so record is option is there the code will be generated but inside that you have to customize the code what it is generated and then you have to see the actual business process is achieved or not suppose if we if we select web protocol and then give uh, i mean just this is just i want to show you like these are the different uh, types of protocols available and based on that, the coding varies. Java, we use it if you take, there is no recording available here. We have to write the code directly in Java. So this we will decide based on the application we get. Suppose if we get any desktop application which are using Java and all these things, then we go for Java, we use a protocol, wherein you have to write the complete code. Suppose if you are in Oracle Web Applications, 11i, or MCA, and as well as web protocol we can record and then we can customize the script and then we can work it out so it depends based on the protocol you use but most probably most of the applications it is record and then customizing the code and then using it this is how we do clear so these are the different uh, supporting environments city protocol protocol different things we have seen so it's it depends Okay, so I showed you the architecture, like the client is our system and then via internet we'll hit all the three servers and we are getting the communication, communication between uh, these servers and we capture the code here. The client in the sense, if you if you are connecting from virtual user generator, if you open the URL from the view gen, what it actually does is it will give us the code. The code is a communication, how it spoke between all these servers and all the communication will be presented in the virtual user generator as a code here. Clear? Okay. So we have different supporting environments. We can do for IBM, HP's many platforms we have. This is again, it's not that important. So this is these are the components. So to explain you these components, first, see this is the symbol of fusion we used to have earlier of this version. This is the symbol. And then controller, this one, and then analysis. But now they have again upgraded the version and they have released the new version which is showing that symbol. So the moment you click here, the Vusion, what it actually does is the scripts. And from the Vusion, what you can do is runtime settings. I'll show you directly. One second. So first we'll just select the HTTP protocol and click create. Okay, so the moment I open the script, it is a blank script. Why it is showing blank script is nothing but uh, why it is blank script is I did not yet recorded the the business process. If I want to record, I have to click this option. But before going to that, I would like to explain you what are the runtime settings we have. Uh, all the fields have they've changed, but okay. Runtime settings are not, uh, okay. Runtime settings are nothing but to execute the code. What are the uh, while running? What are the settings we have to give? That's it. What are the settings? Uh, this is the runtime setting dialog box. 
wherein you can runtime settings is nothing but when the code is getting executed what are the runtime settings you have to give only this information will be will you can edit it here that is what it says so i'll explain you all these options in detail just to show you what are the what is the runtime settings i just explained here i just showed okay so from Vuegen, I opened runtime settings from the Vuegen as well as the script window. The moment I opened, it is a blank script given. So once the business process is recorded, using these two runtime settings, we can create a scenario. I'll explain what is scenario. And then uh, everything is running in the controller. Okay. So if you see Vuegen here, these are Java clients, IE clients, HTTP protocol, capture and record. So this is actually we are doing in Vuegen. So what are the what are the things we are doing in virtual user generator? It is mentioned here. The virtual user generator captures business process and creates a performance testing script is also known as VUser script. That is what we does in Vuegen. Coming to the controller, what we actually do is we will drive managers, we'll run the script and then see, we'll run it for three hours, four hours, five hours, and then see what are the uh, metrics. And then what this analysis will do is it will just see, analyze the code. The, you can the, get the report in Excel, access crystal reports, and all these are just in detail information. What are the components available here in the load runner? You can just see this slide. I'll send you today. See the information and let me uh, let, let you uh, let me ask. I mean, you ask the queries if you have any, or you want me to explain in detail. Yes. So I guess all the options, all the uh, uh, whatever it is given the name, the monitoring, monitoring will be done at the time of execute analysis. So when the load runner, when the controller is executing the code, we will monitor how the servers are behaving. So we will use a monitoring there. And then controller run logs, load generators, I said these are the slaves which are given to controller. Suppose if the, if the memory size is not sufficient in the controller, what it actually does is, it will need the help of some extra missions. Some extra missions we give in terms of load generators to the controller. So it's a slave to our controller master. And this is uh, client emulation. It is directly, this controller is directly going and doing the script, running with 100 users with three hours of time. It is directly going and hitting the servers. And then what is happening after the controller, we are just analyzing it. That's it. So can I proceed further? Okay, fine. So the load runner, I already explained you these three parts. So come to the next one. So before starting, you should uh, you should know actually what are the terminology we use in load runner. So you also seen scenario in the previous slide, which I explained in the complete components. Correct. So scenario, what is actually doing is scenario is nothing nothing but once the script is prepared in the Vuegen, we are giving that script into controller. We are not at all, not only dumping that script into controller, but also, let me open the controller and show you. So in the controller, what we actually give is the script path. Okay, just taking time. Okay, in return I explain you what is it. Okay, see the moment I clicked controller, what it actually gave? New scenario. So I'm explaining now what a scenario is. Scenario is nothing but the events that are involved in that execution. So the events that occur during the testing session, during that session consider, can be considered as scenario. To simply say that, see, now I have four different quotes in the Vuegen. So the moment it displayed a pop-up, what it asked me is, add these available scripts to the scenario. So suppose let me add one script here and then click OK.
So the moment I give OK, you can see that script name and the script path and 100% and load generators. I told you load generators are nothing but slaves. You can or else you can select it to run in the same mission. You can give the IP address on which mission it has to run. So the moment you gave here, so see here. If you come here and see start 10 users, it, that means we are running this script with 10 people. So all these settings, how much time it should run, how many EB users it has to run, and where it, when it has to stop. All this information we decide based on the workload modeling. Workload modeling is nothing but based on the client objectives. The client says my business has to be done for per one hour 60, 60 transactions. Transaction is nothing but what his business terms, like 60 orders per per hour has to be done. So every minute, one hour. So based on those calculations, we decide how many we users and how much time it has to run and all this information. So scenario is nothing but the complete events, uh, the entire things what we do in an, this entire testing session can be considered as a scenario. So if you see here, scenario scripts. So each one can be considered like what are the, what we are doing in this entire entire test during the testing session what are the settings we are doing this can be considered as scenario so now we are running we are just setting for this particular script how many users everything we will set it suppose here if I go click I want to run it with 100 people I will just click apply so next some duration I will give suppose I am ok with 5 minutes next and all we use is it. If I click OK, so this is my testing uh, entire scenario. So if I click save, it will ask me what, what you want to, uh, can you save this scenario? So scenario is nothing but the events that happen in an entire testing session can be considered as scenario. Clear? So that is what they are talking about. So scenarios are nothing but using load runner, we divide your application performance testing requirements into scenarios. So scenario, what it actually defines is the events that occur during testing sessions. So how many number of virtual users to emulate, what actions to perform, and what, what missions they have to run. All this information we set in the controller by creating scenarios. And also, you know, the second term, terminology what we are using is virtual users. Virtual users is nothing but we are replacing manual users. I'll show you once again how to how to add this. See, uh, this is the moment you give. You can inc you can just put the number of users in hundred percent mode or give the number of users directly here. So to give to give input here, what you have to do is go here. We have to double click on it. Once you double click on start the users, it will ask you how many users you want to add. So, so what happens is here I can directly give the number of how many number of users based on my client requirement I give here and then I will click next so I can select these things and click apply. So whatever settings I am doing here it will be directly applied to this scenario and automatically the moment I click run tab I have different tabs. So this is design tab and run tab. Design I will design everything. And then in, in the run tab, what it actually do is I'll just click start scenario and all this information. Clear? So this is another terminology. V virtual users, you know, the moment I give run, uh, in the scenario, load runner replaces with no human users with uh, the virtual users. What it actually does is it will emulate the actions of what our real user are doing. That's what, that is another terminology what we are using. So you know what are virtual scripts and where it is already prepared. It is a mutual virtual user generator. We prepare virtual user scripts. What that script is, it will just replicate the business process what we are doing. So that is what it, it is present in virtual user scripts. Coming to the transactions. You should know what is a transaction. Transaction is nothing but, suppose, Sorry, sorry. Uh, transaction is nothing but 
we want to know the response time. Suppose, uh, example, if you take, um, I, I said example any website. I will tell you detailed example as well. Example, suppose you go to flight website. You are trying to log in. You are searching for a flight. You are booking a flight and then logging out. You want to know the response time for logging. You want to know the response time, how much it is taking for search. And you want to know the response time, how much time it is specifically taking for booking. And you want to know how much time it is taking for logging out. So to, to analyze the response time, suppose if you are doing one, one particular action, that is opening any of the website, to display the login page, you can see instantly it is displaying or not. Once logging into that, so let me show you an example. Go here, click any anything IRC to see. This is it is opening this one. Okay. The moment I give login ID and click login, I want to know how much time it is taking for me to directly log. That is first concept. Second thing, if I am searching for a ticket, how much specifically it is taking for searching a ticket, I want to know. So, I want to know specifically only this particular code, how much time it is taking. Only this particular, uh, this one, how much time, only for particular searching, how much time it is taking. Only for booking, how much time it is taking. So, all this can be achieved only defining transactions. Transactions are nothing but Transactions are nothing but to analyze the performance of trans, uh, performance of the server only for that particular code. So the moment at the time of recording itself, we can give transactions. So for example, yes. So these transactions, we can do it in different, different types. Different types in the sense, at, at different points, we can do the transaction. We can give the transaction at the time of recording itself. Or we can define transactions after generating the code as well. If you have a command over the code, we can do all these things. So the moment when you start recording and then start record and give the URL and then working, what it actually does is, you can uh, 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 see, suppose here, the moment I give start recording and then code is generated, I can define transactions here. LR start transaction for login part and, and suppose login is ended, LR end transaction. Suppose then searching start, LR start transaction search and then ending LR start, LR end transaction search. So I can write the statements here also. Otherwise, LR underscore So the moment you give, you can write it. This is login. So now login code will start. This I can do during recording also. I can give this, and then the code will be present, and then LR. Once a transaction is started, it has to end. So it, it, it is like a timer kind of thing. The moment, uh, the moment before starting it, we will just start the timer. And then once the code is executed, we will stop the timer. So once the timer is stopped, we will come to know how much time it is taking for the execution of that particular code. Okay. So this is like setting a timer in between the quotes to know the time for each business process. It is not an entire business process. We will call business process as an entire thing, but it is just setting timers in between the code so that we will come to know what is what. You can set it manually after the code is generated, first point, or during the recording itself, if you click start record option. Suppose if you say start recording something, yes, so you will come to see one recording bar. So this is recording. Okay. Here you have an option. So the moment it starts recording, you have an option to here see, see the timer symbols. This is start transaction and this is end transaction. That also you can provide. So this is recording. 
this is the code will be generated like this something it got so i didn't see what url i gave so the code is generated so so i gave some url it's automatically going into that and then trying to open google so see here i can start the transaction insert start transaction as it did not uh, completely open so it is giving so this is how we actually does and this is we give during recording suppose if i stop the recording So see, it is generating virtual user script. So the moment I give stop recording, what it actually does is it will stop and give me the script. See so something it's created. So I did not give a timer set timer at the time of recording. So if you see the course, you can you can understand where to put the timer, and then we can. Insert LR underscore start underscore transactions transaction and then double quotes. This is login part ending closing. So again, coming down. So you think that once Google is done, so we want to end the transaction. So we can give here LR underscore and underscore. Transaction. So it will give you the time once actually you will come you will set all these things at the time of so once the moment you start the transaction it will give you the name only that transaction can be ended if you give the name of other transaction it will not work out okay so log if it is wrong name it will not know what what is the timer because you have started with one name and then ending with the other name it will not work out. So we have to be a little careful at the time of uh, just, just to start a transaction. We will just copy the name and then we give it. Okay. And so this is how we define transaction after the recording and during the recording. I I already. Said. So coming to the next terminology. So this is this is a symbol you have seen at the time of recording. So rendezvous points. Rendezvous points to explain you uh, it is a little advanced concept. So it, to give you an example, I'll just explain you what is rendezvous point. Rendezvous point is nothing but you go to a bank and then what we can uh, performance testing in this load and what we actually do is we'll try to create a load in the controller like we'll increase the load in the sense we'll just increase the number of users virtual users uh, in the execution and then we can create a load so what it actually does is in the execution we'll just tell them we'll not let all the hundred people to log in at the same time what we actually do is giving that number in the sense we are telling slowly <clears throat> slowly you just log in all the people and at some point of time all the hundred people will be logged in all the hundred people will be logged in and after that in the execution phase they'll run all the hundred people will be at the time of executing they'll run for one hour and then they'll log out this is what the usual case is if you see in the controller if you go to design phase what it actually does is giving this hundred hundred number what it actually does is 
I'm telling only 100 people will run, but uh, will log in. But 100 people, when they will log in. And all this information I have not yet set. Correct? So 100 people, they might, suppose 2 or 3 people might be in sync, or different people will log in at different. But actually, I am creating load of 100 people during that 5 minute execution. Suppose it will, it might be like one hour execution. If I set this duration to one hour, I am actually what I am doing is I am just creating a load of hundred people. It might not be hundred at fifth minute or it might not be hundred at sixth minute. It the duration in that duration I am maintaining the hundred people. That doesn't mean that I am maintaining all the hundred people at the same time. Suppose if I have given the duration as zero one apply so the moment i give this information see how the graph it is changing so this is like interactive sheet whatever details you give it, it changes based on that and then stop the users okay so duration i am telling it to run for one hour five minutes first initially what is happening is it will initialize the people for 10 minutes like we have set here see every two users i am telling 100 users to start but what I'm saying here, two users at every 15 seconds. I am not letting all the 100 people to jump onto the code at the same time. The code, the execution should be very realistic that it should not make all the 100 people to log in. So we cannot create a scenario at any point of time that all the 100 people will be logged in at the same time. Like the 100 people you might have asked me, you might, you, you can ask me, like after, after, after some time, like after 10 minutes, all the 100 people are here, so we might say that all the 100 people are doing the work here. Correct. As you said, 100 people will be doing the work here, but they may not be in the same line of code what the other 99 people are working. People will be at different, different codes. Suppose if I have given one code here to execute, some people might be in login. Some people might be in searching the flight. Some people might be in booking the flight. Some people might be in logging out. I cannot make all the 100 people to do the same transaction at that point of time in this execution. Correct? So if I want to make that kind of thing, to make all the 100 people to come to a same transaction at some point of time, to define that I have a rendezvous point. To give you a real time example for that, you go to uh, you go to ATM and then you will withdraw a cash of one person. Suppose you want to know how the ATM is behaving, if 500 people withdrawing a cash at the same time, you cannot analyze that using this particular scenario creation in controller. To do that, you have to insert a rendezvous point. You might be asking, rendezvous point if I insert in the code, Anyway, I am running in the controller. Correct. You are running in the controller. Controller has the capability to achieve that. But what it actually does is, when in the code, rendezvous point, LR underscore rendezvous, one statement is included in the code, that means, what it actually does is, it will make all the users will not cross that point. If you say, LR underscore rendezvous in the code of showing 100 people, till for at the search transaction, it will make all the people log in here, come till here and it will make the count till 100. It will not let the people go out, cross it to the next statement of the code until 100 people reach there. So it will just hold the people in a box if you think. It will make the, it will prepare a box here. It will just hold the people into a box and then it will release when the count, what count is become 100 and then directly it will jump to the next statement. Clear about rendezvous point? Anybody, any doubts? Okay, so it is what, okay, so any, if you have any, any queries that this statement will inter, will introduce in the code, like whatever I said, LR underscore start statement, the same way LR underscore rendezvous point of how many people you are expecting to at a time, just give a load, it will ask you the number and we have to insert this in the script. So for ex the example, it might say that for emulate bank load or instruct 100 users to simultaneously deposit cash, anything, anything you can achieve using the rendezvous point. Controller, the symbol of the controller has been changed. So controller, what it actually does is, 
it will manage your scenarios using controller you can run them like uh, controller has a license so if you have if you want to run for different different protocols what you have to do is controller will not give you the license for all the protocols because I have shown you in the virtual user generator right it has around 56 protocols in the trial version it will just give you the web protocol like around 10 people 10 virtual users I, I guess 10 it will not let you run more people because controller is very costly and it will just uh, give you only for one protocol it will not give you for all the protocols suppose if you want to do for SAP GUI or Oracle NCA you have to call you have to get it from HP buying you have to buy from HP all the different licenses so only web protocol they will give for a trial version any doubts okay okay so host host is nothing but load generators only they mean to say so when you execute a scenario load runner controller distributes so suppose in the in the controller if you see I gave 100 people here correct so suppose if my controller as the controller before starting that virtual user generator controller analysis all these three can be installed in a single mission or else controller can be installed in separate system usually what it happens in a company is, is they don't let a controller install in the same mission because controller is very costly suppose for one project if you want if you want it to be execution execution phase comes once after the scripting is done so Vision as it is is free for all, everybody so Vision will be installed virtual user generator will be installed in all the missions suppose if you have a team of 50 people in all the 50 people virtual user generator will be installed but if you are using a controller controller will be specifically installed in one mission or two mission like it, as it is very costly they will have a high configuration you want to run for hundred people thousand people so only in the controller so to make that they will have a high configuration like 47 GB size of hard uh, 47 GB of hard is a very huge configuration they will install controller in that dedicated systems and the time of execution they will share as the IP on that we have to execute the uh, controller and along with the controller as system will not be sufficient We'll have will be provided with load generators. Load generators is nothing but extra IPs. Suppose if those IPs are not at all uh, sufficient for you, you you need extra extra things, extra systems. So those things are called load generators. And those also those also those missions are also not used by anybody. Only specifically designed for execution. They can be used, but actually what they say is like. Uh, controller it might disturb the performance of other people other uh, uh, users and also they don't want to let it happen so they'll have a dedicated box for all controller and load generators if you want to add any IP here just click on this one add so the moment you give you can say name name is LR1 load generator 1 1 and you can say suppose if it is a unix platform you can give unix or windows you can give enable to take part in the scenario okay. so it will give and also actually we have to provide name of this okay. so all the ip address also you can directly give name in the sense if we have to give name or if they have any name it can directly or you can give uh, the IP address of the load generator here it will automatically and before that I know it is some name you have to give or IP address it will automatically add to it once it is added the moment you give run it will this particular script these many number of V users 100 people will go and hit this load generator and it will not run in the controller it will go and run only in this particular IP address Yeah, it should be. It, actually, this system should be in our uh, should be in domain connected. Uh, all these systems, because if uh, suppose if we are accessing a client client network of some domain, so every all the system should be of LAN and they should be in the same domain as well. So then only you have to ping before, even though in the different location, what you have to do is you have to go and then try to ping that whether you are able to ping from your controller or not. You have to check. So. so 
to enable this add this load generator first you have to just ping that uh, ip address and then see the admin will be there the admin actually he takes care of everything he'll give us just ip address being a performance tester they have a separate admin team for giving all this information they'll give over the ip address to use we'll just put that ip address or if you are not, if you are the moment they give the ip if you are not sure it is logging in try to just connect ping that server and if you are not able to connect it either it may be not in your domain or it is in different domain then you have to raise a request with your admin that you are not able to do that so for all the performance testing teams you have an admin person who can assist you in this information or clients can give you this information clear so performance analysis what if uh, performance analysis i said like analysis will tool will automatically once the scenario run is completed the performance analysis it will automatically invoke the analysis part and then i can show you the analysis how it will be but because we did, did not run anything one second let me run so the moment you start scenario oh i gave sorry I gave one and a half hour time. It is. It will take one and a half hour to complete. So, so from here itself, I can automatically invoke analyze results. Once I analyze results, it will automatically invoke me. It will invoke me that analysis module, and this is how it will look like. One second, let me show you. Analysis. Okay, so once we are analyzing and uh, what are the graphs we got, everything will be displayed in the session explorer. So just we have to see analyze the graph and then we have to send our feedback. Suppose if you have given any monitoring tools like so at the time of execution, you want to uh, see how what is actually happening in the server. So you can put some extra monitoring tools other than this one analysis. So that will give you the complete report what is happening inside the server as well. So this is what analysis. So total components we know, like the fusion will be there, and then controller. So this load runner will contain analysis, and then finally. Tuning is not a part of load runner. Tuning actually once after this one, we'll just tune the code and again it will get back to you. So it, it has said that all these are three main parts. And I would like to tell you another point called LR agent. LR agent is nothing but that agent I said right uh, to make a load generator. So you said from the controller to add a load generator how can it become a load generator is there should be the moment the controller says run here it will automatically connect the moment i give load generator name here or ip address what it actually does is it will just make this 100 people to go onto the system and then run but actually the moment i click run how is it happening how is this controller is directly connecting to that particular ip address it will it will happen only through lr agent process the moment i click start scenario here what it actually does is start scenario here. What it actually does is in that particular in that particular IP address, it will go and it will invoke one LR agent will be there. It will automatically invoke and then tell the system, hey, a controller is asking you to run, please run it. So that agent is main which will invoke the process to run. So that is another component which we can discuss. These are the terminologies what we actually use in load runner. So these are the components I've already covered. Components quickly I solved the problems. So this one, how the load runner works is I just said the first thing. A load runner, uh, uh, first thing actually how load runner works. Load runner works. The controller is the central part. Everything is cell, this is explained earlier itself. The controller is the central console from which the load test is maintained. So here, from here I just open the controller. What I am telling 100 people to run in the sense it will automatically run. 100 people will automatically go and hit all the servers at the same time. And then it is creating, uh, this is monitoring tool. This is monitoring what I said. We are, if you are giving any monitoring tool which will monitor this 
particular execution what is happening in the servers at that execution when these people are working on it what is happening at that particular three years it will monitor and it will give you this diagnostics so and again with these things we will analyze the report here and the results are stored in the um, repository that's it so today um, i can wind up the session i can i said what are the components involved uh, involved in the load runner and what is our architecture what each component is doing and how to install load runner 11.51 so this is uh, the concept to, uh, concepts we have covered today and what are the terminologies we are using in load runner and uh, different kinds of testings we do in performance testing so these are the concepts i've uh, completed so let me know if you have any queries